we had previously created this particular effect in a slightly longer method, which took a bit of effort to set up based on the number of curves present in your logo or whichever SVG you chose. I do recommend checking that video out because you never know when that might be helpful. It's linked right now. But today we're going to be using geometry nodes to do it really quickly, really fast, very easily. So let's learn how we can do it. The first thing is going to be importing your SVG, no matter how many vectors it is or however complex it is. So let's delete the default cube and make sure that you have the import SVG add-on enabled. So you have to go to your edit preferences, add-ons, and just search for scalable vector graphics. So there's this import export SVG, check it and then close it. Then you can go for file import SVG that's right over here and choose the file that you want from your folders. So I'm using this particular rose vector that I've gotten off of Pixabay, but you can use anything you want gotten from any source. So first I'll just scale it up by five units so that it's much larger. And then I'll zoom in and you see there's an entire back plane, which I don't actually want. So that's this particular plane. It covers the entire region. I don't want it. So I'll press X and delete it. Next, I want the leaves to be of one color, the rows to be of a different color and the veins of the leaves to be a different color as well. The way you can do that is by creating different objects for each of them. So let's just select the different leaves and make sure that the last one that you select, go to the curve properties here and change it from 2D to 3D. This is very important when you actually join them because it prevents a lot of errors. So once you've changed it to 3D, just press Control J and all of them will get converted to 3D and a single object. Now that curve, you can change to leaf outline. Next, you can select all of the ones that are for the veins. So just shift select all of them. And of course you could use other selection methods like using circle select with C, but this works for me since it's just a few. Make sure that with the last one, you change to 3D and then press Control J. Now we're gonna change this one to veins. So we have to search for which one's highlighted and it is currently curve 25. We'll change this to veins and then we'll select all of the rows ones. So just box select them, select the ones that didn't get selected. The last one that you selected, change it to 3D and then press control J. And now you can change this name to rows. And it seems like we've left out one single curve, which is actually a part of the veins. So let's shift select the veins and press control J and there we are done. Now let's go ahead and create the geometry node section. So let's select the rows, bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and then change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree and the process is really simple since this is already a curve all we have to do is resample it by searching for a resample curve node so that we can set the actual resolution we'll keep it at something fairly high maybe 500 and make sure that you change the resolution here as well to the same amount so let's go with 500 so that it's really smooth now this doesn't have to be 500 but i think 500 mostly covers all of the curves then we want to use a trim curve node to actually create the animation that we keyframed last time manually and now after the trim curve node we want this to actually have some geometry so i'll press shift and search for for a curve to mesh, plug that in. And for the profile curve, press shift A and search for a curve circle. Now the radius of the curve circle is gonna be way too large. So I'll change that to 0.01 and then plug that into the profile curve. Now it's still too large. So I'll make it 0.001. And that seems thin enough. Next, we just wanna set material and shade smooth. So I'll press shift A and search for a set shade smooth node and then shift A and search for a set material node. Now for the material, we can choose the default material, go to the material properties over here, remove whatever material is currently on it by pressing this minus button and then clicking new and then going to this drop down and selecting material. Then you can create two more slots and for the first slot we'll click new and then the second slot we'll click new and now we'll change the first materials name to rows. The second one we can change it to leaf and the third one we can change to veins. Then we can select our leaf outlines object, shift select the rows, press control J, control L and click copy modifiers. Now even these get the geometry nodes modifier and then we can select our veins, shift select it, control L, copy modifiers. Then we can actually animate the trim curves node before we duplicate them and change the materials. So let's animate it. Before animating, we'll set all of our animation defaults. So let's go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. End frame can be 150. Output folder can be wherever you want it to be format is going to be FFmpeg video and we're going to change the encoding container from Matroska to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptually Lossless. Then we'll go to our render properties, switch on bloom and screen space reflections and for the bloom we'll clamp it down at something like 4 and that should be all right. Then maybe around frame 10 we'll have all of these curves to start appearing so till then we'll have the start value all the way at 1 which means all of them are going to be invisible. Then we'll press I and then we'll go down to maybe frame 120 or let's say 125 and then change this all the way down to zero and then press I. And right now the default is Bezier, which means it's gonna start slow, it's gonna speed up in the middle and it's gonna end slow as well. And I think that's all right for my animation. Of course, you can make it linear if you want, but I'll leave it like this for now. And essentially all the curves should come in. So now we have to actually copy the modifiers and change the material. So let's first select the leaf outlines, press this button to make it its own geometry node tree and then change this from rows to leaf. Then let's select our veins. Again, press this button and then change it from rows to veins. And 
Once you've done that, you can start off with the scene setup and the materials. So for the scene setup, we'll first select our default light and press X to delete it because we don't necessarily require it. However, you can keep it for lighting up the background if you want to do so. Then we'll press Shift A, Mesh and scale it up to act as our background. And we'll also just move it down by a little bit so that the reflections are really nice. So just press GZ and bring it down by a little bit. It doesn't have to be too much. Then we'll go to our world properties, change the color down all the way to black and we'll go to our pop icons over here and change the viewport shading to rendered. Then we'll select our background plane, add in a new material by going to our material properties over here and pressing this new button and we'll change the name to background. Then we'll change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. Now for the background, we'll first convert this to a complete metallic color and we'll reduce the base color as well to something fairly dark or we can keep it really bright it's all right we'll just hide the light for now then we'll select our rows we'll remove the principal bsdf by pressing x and then pressing shift a and searching for an emission node plugging that into the surface so right now we have veins selected so we're working with the veins material so when we plug it into the surface we have to give it the material for our veins which is going to be a greenish color and we're going to increase the strength to something like 10 and that's all right then we'll select the leaf select the principal bsdf press x delete it press shift a and search for an emission node plug that into the surface and this time I'm going to change the color to maybe a lemon greenish color and I'm going to increase the strength to 10 again. Then I'm going to select the rose material over here, delete the principal BSDF by selecting and pressing delete and then pre searching for an emission node, plugging that in and changing the color to a pinkish color and increasing the strength to something like 100. Then we can switch off overlays to see what we have. I think I'm going to change the leaf to make it a little more greenish and that seems all right. Then finally for the plane, which is our background, I'll play around with the roughness by searching for a Voronoi texture node and simply plugging the color into the roughness and that way we should be able to see some reflections with some texture but the texture is too large so I'll increase the scale and now we see the texture behind it. Now if we go to a direct top-down view you won't be able to see it but if you press ctrl alt 0 to snap your camera to view then select the camera change the focal length down to something like 18 and then go to the object properties and just bring it in on the z and then just place the location appropriately you should be able to see a little bit of the reflections which I think looks fairly good and adds to the neon effect and yeah with that you're actually done with the animation and all you have to do is press render animation of course you could play around with the background a little bit more you can animate the background as well you can definitely check out previous videos on my channel because we've done a lot about backgrounds and we've added custom backgrounds for every single video including animated ones so just before rendering i did decide to move the ground plane a little further down which actually enhances all of the reflections so that there are far more reflections and apart from that i added in a color ramp and just decrease this white value by a little bit so that everything is not completely non-reflective and similarly the black value i just increased by a little bit so that nothing is completely reflective either and finally for the voronoi texture i also changed this from 3d to 4d and i've keyframed the w value over the 150 frames to go from 20 to 20.025 so this is zero and this is 20.025 and that's creating the motion in the background that you're about to see right now if you like this video do check those out as well i upload videos every Every single day and i'm sure i'll have some content or the other that you'll definitely appreciate and find helpful until the next video comes out thank you so much for watching and keep creating and stay creative